Hello everyone and welcome to this week's sermon prayer. This coming weekend we'll be celebrating the second Sunday of Advent in year C. Last week we began a new liturgical year. We're starting things anew. We are starting everything anew actually. Uh, our liturgical year but also we are renewing our faith in Christ. We are renewing our hope in his promises. We are renewing our love for him, turning against all the bad that we have done and focusing on him a bit more. The readings of this week speak of the intervention of God in favor of mankind. It speaks of how, of how God goes out as it were looking for us. In the first reading, the salvation is manifested through the return of, of, of the Jews to Jerusalem uh, when, when, when they come back. And it's taken from the book of Baruch, uh, chapter 5, verse 1 to 9. Uh, the book of Baruch is not a book that we, we read from a lot, but it has these as its opening words. Take off the garment of your sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory from God. Put on the robe of righteousness from God. Put on your head the diadem of gold of the glory of the everlasting. For God will show your splendor everywhere under the heavens. It speaks about Jerusalem preparing herself. It says that it take off the garment of sorrow and affliction and put on the beauty of the glory of God. It's a time of preparation, a time of, of, of getting ready. I remember as, as, as a child, whenever uh, I wanted to go somewhere, maybe my mother was walking out and I wanted to go somewhere with her and I'd cry after her and she'd say, well, Go and change your clothes. Go on and put on better clothes. And then I'd run into my bedroom and, and, and to, to try to get some, uh, a new pair, pair well, a new uh, set of clothes so that I, I, I look clean. But when I come out, obviously, she would have left me. Um, but there's something about being told to go change. It, it speaks of, an, 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 not just an urgency, but it speaks of the fact that there is something better that is about to take place. There's something good that, that is uh, uh, about to, to, to take place. So that's what Jerusalem is, be, is being told, that prepare yourself for, for, for the coming of this Lord Jesus. And in our Gospel reading, the Gospel according to Luke, it explains how the promises of salvation made by the, promise, by, made by the prophets uh, came true. Luke tells us that it begins when the word of God was addressed to a man named John, the son of Zechariah, who lived in the desert, and it tells us exactly how that took place. As Father Brett said last week in his sermon prayer, this week, or this year rather, is the year of St. Luke, or the Gospel of St. Luke, cycle C is, is, is the cycle of St. Luke, so we'll be reading a lot from the Gospel of St. Luke. And our Gospel reading is from Luke chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 6. So it's right at the beginning of, of, the, of the Gospel um, that, that is according to, to Luke. Uh, and it says, it, it quotes the, the prophet Isaiah when it speaks about a voice in the desert at crying, saying, prepare the way of the Lord and make the paths of the Lord straight. Every valley shall be full, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth, and all the flesh, or and all flesh rather, shall see the salvation of our God. All flesh shall, shall see the salvation of our God. It's as if here St. Luke is speaking of our hearts, that every valley in our hearts should be filled, and, and, and every 
mountains and hilly places in our hearts should be brought low. And all that is crooked within us must be made straight. And all that is rough must be made smooth. So that when Christ does come, when that baby is born in Bethlehem in a few weeks time, he's also born in mine and your heart. That it changes us. That we no longer become the same people. That this new start that we are preparing is actually a start that is going to turn out for the better. That it's actually a start where really we are going to experience or we are going to see the salvation of our God. In the second reading, the Apostle Paul refers to the merciful intervention of God when he tells us of the day of the coming of Christ. When he speaks to the Philippians, our reading is taken from uh, the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, uh, chapter 1, verses 4 to 6, and verses 8 to 11. It says that when he's speaking to, to them, he says, Always in every prayer of his, he thinks of them and he makes his prayer with joy, thankful for the partnership in the gospel that they have taken uh, with him in preaching the gospel of Christ. He says that God is my witness of how I yearn for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus and that it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment. Um, and when you go right to the end of, of, of that reading, he says that he, he prays that they may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ and that they may be filled with the fruits of righteousness which comes from Jesus Christ to the glory and to the praise of God. Think spotless in the day of the coming of Christ. It goes back to what we are speaking about in our gospel reading, that Christ comes to us as a people who are cleansed, as a people who are new, as a people who are now yearning and wanting to do His will and what He wants for us. And our psalm, our psalm is Psalm 126, and it's taken from uh, a, a lot of places within that psalm. Uh, but listen to how it starts. When the Lord brought back the exiles of Zion, we thought we were dreaming. Then our mouths were filled with laughter, and our, on our tongues there were songs of joy. It goes back to, to those exiles that we find in the, gospel, in, in the first reading from the book of Baruch. But the response to the song, what great deeds the Lord were to us, indeed we were glad. It speaks about the joy that we get when, when it, by being children of God, or the joy that we get from the Lord our God. And, and when he brings back those exiles from 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 uh, Zion, or so prophet brings back the exiles of Zion, rather, uh, that's that's where you see the power of God, but that's where you also see His glory, that He restores things. As I said, that the 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 theme of it is God's intervention and how He brings His salvation to us all. That's a good thing now of, of our faith, that when we start to look for God, when we start to go out and, and try to be better people and align ourselves with the will of God, God doesn't sit back. God himself in turn goes for intervention and comes for us. He in turn wants also to seek us out. So the minute that we seek God, we make God want to come closer to us. So, well, this is not exactly what we'll be looking at uh, this coming week because we'll be having our second week of, of, of our listening circles for, for the Senate. But those are, our, those are our readings for this coming week when we're celebrating the second week of Advent as we prepare for the coming of the Lord. Um, so I do hope that we'll meet again this coming weekend and together we're going to praise this God who goes out and he looks out for us. And until then, I hope you have yourself 
a safe and pleasant time. Take care and bye-bye.